the strategies, the course, and building your practice, at least this income stream around political marketing. So I welcome all of you who are here. I'm excited to, uh, to have you guys here, and so many of you are live, so very cool. One thing I want to get into is that selling political clients is different than what you're probably doing today. And we'll talk about that in a second. We're going to talk about three simple ways. They're, they're all really easy, you guys. I can't make it, I can't make it hard. <laughs> they're pretty easy to get clients. I don't know why I never uh, shared this before. This may be honestly the easiest, the easiest way, the easiest niche to break into. Um, we'll get into pricing, bundling, packaging, etc. So, and let's see. All right, let's just do it. So first, selling clients, and unlike local or traditional local, right? Selling local politicians is a different game. And these are politicians and wannabe politicians because we all know there are two groups. There's the guys that run all the time. There's the guys, the guys and gals that win all the time. And, you know, all the, the various uh, trappings that go along with that. So it's very different. These prospects, right, for us, they face a very real deadline. They have pressure pressure to produce in a rapid manner. It's not unlike when internet marketers are marketing to you, we're all under time deadlines when something's closing out. Like I bought something the other day because I wanted to get it and I didn't want to miss out. Well, politicians face the same thing. They have a very real deadline as determined by their state um, Department of Elections, right? You got scarcity at play, right? There's only a certain amount of resources available. There's only a certain amount of candidates or people that are able to assist. Um, scarcity of time, resources, et cetera, is a big one. Lack of resources on its own. Staff, help, um, everything is huge. And one thing that's different is every one of these guys and gals, every wannabe politician or reelected uh, candidate has a budget. It can be small, but they all have a budget that they have to spend on something related to the election of their campaign. Now, they can leave it sit in the account, but that isn't going to do any good if they're trying to get elected and they got 12 weeks to make it happen, or they got six months or nine months, whatever it is. So it's important. It's important that you understand this is different, and these are the main factors on why it's different. So I think you get it. They have budget, they have to spend it, they don't have a lot of help, you got scarcity and time deadlines and stuff like that all, all playing a role in forcing the hand of the future client, currently a prospect for you. Um, and then depending um, on the timing, so talking about a real deadline, they are facing multiple deadlines. They are facing a qualifying deadline, which is when they decide whether they're going to run for office or re-election, right? That is set by the state, as far as I know, in every state in the country, in the U.S. And they have to qualify to run for office by typically paying a fee in most cases. Now, at higher level offices, they have to get signatures and all kinds of stuff like that. We're not dealing with that. Then you've got a primary deadline, which is when the primary election occurs. And what I mean by that is, like, for instance, here in... Uh, here in May, May 24th, there's a primary election. So that's when the parties, when you vote, and you're going to select from multiple candidates running under any one party, if that's the case. And if there's only one candidate, you can go in and just push the button by that person's name. Right? Then you have the general election in the fall, which this year coincides with the presidential election. All right? And uh, Mark, we'll talk on that. Good question. Thanks. Um, we'll get into detail there. So these are the deadlines they're facing, and they're very real. So my deadline specific about my own campaign, right, is May 24th. So what's today? It's April, early April. So I have an immediate deadline, and I'm forced to take action, and I'm one of 17 or 18 local people forced to take action. Then I have a November deadline, assuming I'm fortunate enough to win, which I may or may not. Let me see, I've got a slide here that kind of shows this. So 
this is taken from the consumer standpoint or the, the voter standpoint, but you can see the registration deadline and there's some uh, roar in the media about Trump's children who didn't change their party from independent, I believe, to Republican so they could vote for him in New York. The deadline for those guys was October of last year for the primary. So <laughs> they, they're not even able to vote for their own dad, which, God, it's, it's talk about lack of preparation. So, yeah, and Josh just gave a great comment or statement. The primary is really in a weeding out election. It's the election to be on the real ballot, right, in November. So, like, for instance, with me, there's three candidates on the, the Republican ticket for my seat that I'm running for in the school board. Now, one of them decided to drop out the other day. Lucky Brian, right? Um, I don't know why. And... You know, it is what it is. I had a nice conversation with her after the fact, and super nice lady. She had her reasons, but she decided to drop out. So now it's me and one other person, and one of us will move on to the real election in November. So we're going to do this weeding out process. And you can see these example dates in the state of Georgia, and this is across the entire state, and you can see the subtle differences on dates, both for voter registration and the actual date of the election. Okay. Now let's talk about lack of resources. Now typically, the local or regional candidate has the following to help them. If they're married, they have a spouse, husband or wife, right? They may have one to two core volunteers and then a couple casual volunteers. Now in many cases, the spouse is listed as the campaign manager, but they're not a real campaign manager not in the in the guys that you see on TV or at state level elections they're really just the go-to person to get stuff done okay so they don't have a lot of help none of these people are experienced yeah the dates vary by state uh, Nyan Hill um, so for instance if your primary um, it it's completely different based based on state so you have to look and you can go to the elections office in your county or at the state level and you can get all that data by any state I'll post some links if you if you need them for me um, so now lack of resources is a problem because when you have a short amount of time and you don't have a lot of help and you're burning the candle at both ends meeting people and doing things you start to get frustrated because you can't get stuff done and truly Virtually no candidate has the, none of the local or regional candidates has a real paid staff or team at their disposal to do stuff. Everything is at the will or availability of the volunteers. Okay. Now, state candidates, as a caveat, and I've met a bunch of them lately, typically have more of a real support network. I've met um, four people at the Senate, U.S. Senate and U.S. Congress level running for these offices, all of them have a paid and seems to be quite savvy campaign manager and they typically have some low-end paid staff, not paid very much, but paid staff. They have significantly bigger budgets and I don't suggest that most of you, if any, are really sh should be targeting these people unless you get brought in by like a strategist like we talked about in the opportunity. So we're going to focus on local and regional because it also has the trickle-down effect that, that we spoke about. Now, the other difference that's, I think, pretty cool, the other difference is they have budget. Now, you may say local businesses have budget. They do, but they don't often want to spend it. In this case, these people have budget and they have to spend it. <laughs> And Josh Wheeler has me laughing. Hey, Josh. Um, he said, Brian, on top of that, as soon as they decide to run, their IQ drops 40 points because there's so much stuff going on. Man, I, I completely agree with you on that. Even me on this local thing, I mean, I'm, I'm stressed out. And uh, I don't get stressed that easily, not really stressed, but I'm, I'm burning the candle at both ends, early mornings and late nights. So it's, uh, it's interesting. But there's the website in Georgia as an example. It's called Georgia Easy File. And I'm going to walk through this with you and why you want to investigate the same system in your state. All right? Let's look at it.
because all these questions about money are important. So here's the website. It's uh, Georgia Easy Campaign Finance, and it's you can just pick a county. So I live in Fayette County. So when I go there, I can pick Fayette County, right? Easy. No questions, right? Okay, good. You see all these candidates come up. It's alphabetized. I mean, I'm, I'm even first. How nice is that? <laughs> and uh, you see all these people, right? And you just pick the one you want to look at. All right, let's target Brian. That's easy, right? Here's the forms that I had to file. It's not my phone number, by the way, but <laughs> I'll give you my phone number, but that one's not mine. That is a uh, cell phone number to one of my team. Um, there's a CCDR form, and it probably has a different name in every uh, in every state, if I had to guess. It just takes a little bit of digging, y'all. Um, so this CCDR form ties into the budget, all right? Let's, let's look at it. All right, here's my CCDR form through March 31st. Total amount of all itemized contributions received in this reporting period, one grand, 1,075. All loans received, that's Brian loaning money, 2,600. So, you know, I'm not, I don't have a big budget and I'm not spending a ton. Um, I'm gonna end up loaning another grand or two probably. I'll probably spend 6,000 maybe by the time it's said and done. And maybe I'll raise 2,000. So, not exactly a good ROI, right? So, but now you see, exactly how much money, and I'll have a better one coming up on another screen, how much money this candidate has. Now they can always add more as a loan, which is what most of them do, but by doing this, you already know if they have money. Here is one, here's one you guys right here. This is for a school board member in my county. Nothing to do with, it's not me, and as you look, this person has 15,000 budget right now. So 15,000, that's school board. Not bad. Small county too, okay. Um, let's look at a sheriff. This sheriff has 27,000. Now, how cool would it be if you could look at every business you want to sell to and see how much money they have available in their pool of money to do marketing. <laughs> Give me a one in the chat box right now if you would like the ability for anybody you call on that you already know how much money they have. Pretty good idea, right? Yeah, it'd be sweet. <laughs> I get a hell yeah from a few of you. <laughs> That's awesome. Guys, it doesn't get any better. Sheriff Bab here has got 27000 If you know they have more money than the next guy, you know your packages are going to be more comprehensive that you're going to pitch to that person, right? Yeah, trick question, right? You guys, fish in a barrel, says Rick. Absolutely, but it's, it's true everywhere. Let me see. Um, now, here's a sheriff. In, now, that was in my small town, county of 100000 Here's a sheriff candidate in Fulton County, which is the city of Atlanta. So it's bigger. This guy's got 42,000. 42 grand. I'm thinking he needs to spend at least 15 or 20 on digital, if not more. So, and the question is, who's he gonna spend it with? Is he gonna hunt it down and find random people to help? Is he gonna run into Paul Guthrow, who's gonna pitch him his five-step process that's gonna get this guy elected, right? Easy. We know the answers. So let's think about it. Who do we really want to target? Who do we want to target? We want to target people that have the money. You know what? Let me go back a slide. There are some questions. Let me go back for a second. So this document, hang on. Let me see if I have one. I do, I do, remind me later. Hang on a second. Um, give me a sec, you guys, I'm gonna just pull one up. Because there's also, like Kami said, how much have they spent, right? 
how much do they have? And it's a running total, and it's always, it's always done now. This one spent most of the money. I have this one open, whoever the sheriff candidate was, 42000 They spent thirty nine, And it goes through and details what they spent it on, you guys. So if you know they already spent a bunch of digital money, maybe you're not going to target them. All right? Let me see if I can find a good page that would show that. It's like this everywhere. Um, all right. They spent it on choice savings advertising, $1,700. Um, Reese Rental, $3,000. Metro PCS campaign phones, they spent $300 on cell bills. $41 on a cell bill here, $39 on a cell bill. Choice savings advertising, man, that sure sounds suspicious. They got another $2,750. Bucks. Fulton County Dems, they got $4,500. This is a Democrat. Graphics company got $670. The rental company got $3,000 again. And it just goes on and on. Merle's Cafe, man, they got $800. They must have held an event there, right? So you get this kind of data. Who gave them money and where they spent it on. So you need to... You know, if I was targeting this guy, I'd figure out what choice, I always like when they spell advertising wrong. <laughs> choice savings advertising, spelled wrong. Um, sounds like a real reputable company. Um, they got 1700 Okay. All right. Enough of that. And we'll come back. And I see your questions. I'm not going to miss them, you guys. I'll come back on them, okay? Um, all right, we did the candidate. Now, we're talking about who to target. Now, if you're like me, you want to make more money rather than less. I mean, I'm not even going to ask you the stupid questions. You don't have to press 1 to that. Press 2 if you don't want to make more money. How's that for um, the epitome of a dumb question, right? Which candidates have the most budget? Now, typically, the ones that have the most budget are the ones running for jobs that pay the most money. Imagine that. If you are going to win a job that pays north of 100K, you're going to, for multiple years, you're going to spend more money than if you're running for a job that pays seven or $800 a month, right? All right. State court judge. Pays in my state pays north of 100 grand, 140 grand uh, in my county, 150 grand roughly. Solicitor, district attorney, state house pays about 25 grand a year, 24 ish if you count the per diems. State senate pays about the same thing. While that isn't a lot compared to sheriff and tax commissioner and state court judge and DA and solicitor, there's some prestige around state house and senate that cause people to spend a lot of money. So, thanks, Cammie. I'm going to go back to that. Um, so, that is one way. You've always heard follow the money. It's the same thing here. It's public record how much different jobs pay. But in general, these jobs tend to pay the most. The various judges, um, the elected judges, the solicitor and DAs, the sheriffs, the tax commissioners, jobs that are paying north of 50000 north north of 100 in many cases. People spend more money to get those jobs. But I would say don't ignore the small salary positions such as school board. Candidates will, will and do spend five to 15000 to win a job that pays 500 a month. Please do not ask me why. It does not make any fiscal sense. It's because they care. They want to make a difference. They have some other reason that they want that, right? So I showed you the one school board with the 16000 and that was no expenses on that one. I checked it a second ago, Cami. 16000 raised, none spent at this point. Um, so now that person might want to spend some money. Now that person may, may also not be up for office because not everybody runs every year. But there's always somebody running every year. So this is evergreen, guys. Yeah, Josh hit it on the head. Why? Influence. For me, why do I want to be on the school board? I ask myself that same question almost every day the past month. Um, honestly, it's because I really do want to make a difference and help. I, I wanted to take a more active role locally in my kids' education. I can't be a teacher. I don't have the time. Um, I couldn't afford to be a teacher. But I, I can make a difference, right? I can help. And a lot of people feel that way at the 
it, they're more, it's more of a servant mentality. I want to serve the community, right? And yeah, sure, I'll get some influence. And all right, between all of us on the call, I'll probably meet every relevant business owner that I could ever want to do business from a marketing standpoint. And maybe I would end up landing 30 or 40 new clients as a result, maybe. But that's not why I'm doing it. Um, I'm doing it because I really do want to give back. I want to help. And I want to be involved uh, where all four of my kids spend more time than they spend at my house. So, and I, and I want to control what's taught, and I want the best for our kids, and I want to get them out of 1985 and get them into the 21st century. But that's that's just my opinion. But my point on that whole diatribe is don't ignore small budget people. Don't do it. Okay. Now, three simple ways. I'm not even going to build it out. I'm just going to show you. It doesn't get any easier, and you have to believe me. You email the candidate, you can get the full contact info from the political party website. You either join or visit the local party and meet and greet. I did it last night. The Republicans and Dems have the largest turnout almost anywhere. Now, it may vary. In certain cases, there are some green parties and stuff in certain states that are big, but I'm just saying in general, you guys. Um, and target campaign strategists like Gene does. You know, we'll do a whole call on how to do that um, and really dig in on it because Jean's got a lot of value to add there. I mean, she she's added a hell of a lot of clients through that option, and and I don't think we can give it credit credible coverage in one or two slides here. It's a little bit different. So these are three simple ways, right? Three simple ways to land clients, and you're like, well, Brian, duh. All right, well, let's go a little deeper. <laughs> Let's go a little deeper. I already went deeper on the money. I showed you how to find the money on campaign disclosures and how to decide if they are a low budget client or an ex a higher budget client. Now to email them directly, it'd be nice if you didn't have to Google. It'd be nice if you could just look them up and get their name and their email and maybe even their website if they have one, right? And if they have a real crappy website, you know they need you, um, right? So, funny enough, I went to the Republican Party website in my county, and it lists everybody running for every office that's relevant to my county, and an email and website. Every one of them. And I know that there's not much I'm going to do for this first lady running for Senate. She has zero chance. I'm, I'm not interested. I don't, I don't share the same beliefs. I'm not going to support her. I like Mr. Grayson, Reverend Grayson, and I like um, Johnny Isaacson is going to win. I can tell you that already. But... Mr. Grayson is going to put up a good fight. Seems like a good dude. Um, so, so for me, if I wanted to target one, it might be Derek Grayson. Um, but you can email him directly, and that's at the U.S. That's at the federal level, and I'm probably not even going to focus on guys like that as as I continue to expand. For me, it's more about the local stuff, like state rep, the positions we've talked about. Now, email him direct is pretty easy. All right, well, what do you say? Well, funny enough, Walt asked the other day, and I, I didn't make it up. This is all I'm doing. My name is Brian Anderson. I'm an Internet marketing consultant focused on political elections, or um, you could even say local or regional elections, right? I'm based in Peachtree City, and I specifically serve the Southern Crescent area of Atlanta. That's the bottom three or four counties. I've created a five-step digital strategy to maximize, right? This is just some email fodder to get them to respond. We build awareness. All of this is accomplished at reasonable price. That's what everybody wants. Leaving their competitors wondering, what's that guy doing? Now, I also have one or two other things I drop in here because I have examples. And I say I recently worked on this campaign or that campaign. And conveniently, any campaign I will reference was, is somebody that won, right? Pretty easy. We'll post it in the uh, Facebook group. It's actually, I already posted it to Walt, but... You're welcome to copy it and tweak it, et cetera, and share it out. It works. It'll come down to your subject line. Um, and then here's the body to make it easy on you. Yep, it's already, Cammy, it's already there, but I will personally make sure that I tag you when this call ends, and I'm going to make sure Vanessa uploads it everywhere as well. Super easy. Um, and I'll even give you the last two subject lines. I split test my subject lines, and I'll give you the last two I've done and tell you which one worked better. So, let's see. Now, visit your local party. The other way to land clients is actually to get off the duff and go in and meet people. 
Don't be intimidated. Select the party that's closest to your own beliefs. If you're a Republican, do not go to the Democratic Party because you're just the look on your face is going to give you away, and vice versa. Now you can find it via Google. Search blank, you know, whatever uh, Fulton County, Gwinnett County Republican Party. It's going to come right up the website. What, whatever it may be in your state, parish it doesn't matter if you're Louisiana. In Canada, I guarantee you it's a very similar concept. Look up the meeting schedule and just show up. It usually costs nothing to show up. Now you can join, and I would recommend paying. Uh, mine was twenty-five bucks. I'd recommend paying it just so you can be on all the email lists and and be official. And you can say, "Yeah, I'm a member of the party." Whatever. Uh, dress professional, but if, if if you're in an area like I am, most people don't wear suits. I wore dress slacks and a short sleeve golf shirt last night to the meeting I went to, and. Uh, Bring your business cards. Um, don't forget that. Remember, you do need a website. You do need a business card. Um, Vanessa, or one of the team, is, can somebody add Philippe um, in? And Philippe, if not, message me, and I'll, I'll take care of it for you. Same thing, Diane. I'll make sure you're in there. It should be in the members area of the website, um, and, and I highly suggest getting in there. I noticed it was light on, on some members, so we'll try to get all those people in. Um, always harder than you think to to reach out, but we'll do our best, so Diane and Philippe. So visit your local party. It's free, it's easy, and everybody there is dying to talk to somebody. Most of the people don't know everybody. Yeah, now here's a good comment from uh, Robert Anson just said, Brian, would it make sense to choose a party based on the dominant party in our area as they get the greatest financial support? Kinda. I mean, my gut says yes to that, Robert, but if you're a hardcore liberal Democrat, don't join the Republican Party or don't you're just gonna you're gonna be like you're gonna be a fish out of water. And if you're an ultra conservative Tea Party member, you're not gonna be able to hold the disdain on your face when you're in that liberal Democrat meeting, right? Just follow your own beliefs, even if it's not the dominant party. I'm just telling you, you'll have a better chance of landing deals that way. Um, Let's see. All right, I'm gonna, I see a bunch of questions, you guys. I'll come back at the end. Um, now, the other option, sell through local strategists. I'm going to ask Jean to do a, a call on this because she's an expert at it. She's closed over 20 clients through this model, and I have not. I can't add a lot of value here. I can tell you that the easiest way to find the strategist, because you can't sell through them if you don't know who they are. And the only way you're going to know who they are for most of us is to visit the party. Do what I do. Watch, listen, keep your mouth shut for a while. It will become real obvious quickly who runs the show. Last night at the meeting I was at, there were two people that stuck out to me. One of them is, is the kingmaker behind the scenes from the Tea Party. It was obvious this gentleman... He's a retired military colonel. This guy was running the show. He is, by all accounts, a strategist. Um, now, for me, I personally hit him up and talked to him. I'm not a member of the Tea Party, but I hit him up, and we hit it off. We talked military, my dad and myself and my brother and five generations. So I, I talked up the military angle because I didn't have a Tea Party connection, but I knew he was in the military since he mentioned it. <laughs> and uh, all you got to do is do what I did. Set up a follow-up meeting, go meet up at Starbucks, go grab lunch if it makes sense, and talk to that person. Talk about what you're doing and how you can add value and how you can help the cause. Because remember, a lot of these people, it's not about money. It's about serving the community. It's about, it's about a cause. It's about a belief system that's bigger than they are. It's about if you're a Tea Party person, you, you're going to be more of a strict constitutionalist. Uh, you're going to abide by the... Bill of Rights, and you're going to adhere to, you know, in many cases, a very strict interpretation. So it's a set of beliefs that's deeper and bigger than themselves. And if you resonate with that person or system, your odds of your odds of getting that business goes up. Let's just be honest, right? So let's make the jump from talking about budget, from talking about how to find them. Now let's talk about pricing and packaging. Because these go hand in hand. First, I want you to be very, very clear on something. 
I get this question all the time, and in here it is never more so true. There is no hard and fast rule on what to charge. Now, I will tell you, as we went through that budget exploration, looking at their finance disclosures, we know that if the guy has 1100 bucks and he's running for a low-end position, he's not going to spend 11000 with you. It will not happen. He may spend two or 3000 but he's not going to spend 11000 So give it up. You got to do value-based pricing to fit the budget. It's that easy. Fit the budget. Now, just because they only have twenty or 30000 in the budget, as disclosed, doesn't mean they don't have more and aren't willing to loan more or raise more. But use it as a guide. Use it as a guiding hand to help you, right, to help you make, uh, you know, kind of these decisions. So very, very important. Um, Walt asked me and a few other people the other day, I mean, it should be painfully obvious to you guys, but let me tell you what my five-step strategy is. Dynamic website with retargeting. Facebook fan page and group. Very important right there. Customized videos. Extremely important. Programmatic constituent targeting. Boy, that's a fancy word for something coming. Political drops, robocalling, voice drops, etc. right? Now, I also do email marketing, but I don't, I don't position it as part of the five. Um, it's an add-on. It's an upsell. <laughs> these are the five things that I reference in the email that I talk about. And then I go over these and why they need them. Why do you need a website? Well, in 2016, if you don't have a slick-looking website that uh, can explain and expound upon your positioning and help you raise money and help you mobilize volunteers, you are making a mistake. If you are not retargeting visitors, etc., you are making a mistake. Uh, Facebook fan page, you need the fan page for one reason. You want to run targeted ads on Facebook, so you need a fan page. You need the group for a different reason. You're going to build a, re a community, not unlike what we all do, right, in marketing groups, but you're going to build it around your run for office. You, you guys are all invited to join mine. The only thing is in mine, stay real clear of making any kind of post or comment that isn't relative to what's being said, don't uh, never talk about what we're doing here, or you know the fact that you may live in Iowa or Maine or whatever. But you get the gist. I mean, let's be honest. Customize videos. Why videos? Because videos actually get played. When other content falls down, videos are are just tremendous. And when you combine those with programmatic advertising, the next the next one. So imagine. You guys have seen, you know, who does a lot of videos on Facebook? Mario Brown does, if you don't know Mario. Mario loves Facebook video ads. Ben Atkins does sometimes, a few others. It's the same thing. When you start hitting the constituents with a combination of text, with call to action, and video ads to build awareness and name recognition, you're starting to get pretty cool, guys. And when you do political drops, multiple times leading up to the actual election the last two weeks you're getting you're getting you're getting fancy on these local guys and they love it um, I don't think you need a video marketing course uh, Reginald uh, save your money but we'll talk about it um, we'll talk about it in a group and we can talk about it here in a minute um, I'm, I'm an advocate of saving your money whenever you can um, and let's talk about why um, all right let's talk about candidate websites well obviously Every candidate wants slash needs a website. Even if they don't want one, right? Even if they don't want one, they need one. Most struggle getting it together in a timely manner. I think we can all agree on that. Let's talk about the key components. Simple layout. Yet, it looks nice, right? Duh. <laughs> um, communicates the core message. You have to deliver and hit on the core message. It has to be simple. They're not going to spend an hour on your website. You have to get that point across. You need to deliver video content. Josh, who's worked on several campaigns, just said live broadcasts turned to video ads were our best result getter. And Josh, we still got to regroup, but I love it. Um, donations. Trust me, they all want more money. I want more money to help offset the bleed on the campaign. Um, solicit volunteers. Now, I'm blessed with a pretty good volunteer network, far beyond some of my competitors, but all of them want volunteers, you guys. Retargeting, important. I don't need to tell you why. 
What should you charge? Pretty easy. You need to be aggressive. You need to be aggressive. $500 to $2,500. You, you know, and this is state and regional level. Now, if you're, excuse me, this is local and regional level. If you're going after some kind of more complex state website, um, which I don't suggest for 99% of you, then it's a different discussion. So the Facebook fan page and group design, right? So the design. So, yeah, you want to do, you want to create the page. What are you going to do? Create the page. In the group, custom graphics, you know, identity branding, etc. Then the big one: comprehensive communication strategy you use with the page and the group. Now, most of these guys don't understand the difference between a page and a group to save their lives. My opponent just joined Facebook the other day. She's got eleven or twelve friends. Last time I looked, <laughs> and I'm just thinking, wow, wow. And I, I'm willing to bet she's not the only one like that. So, let's see. I would I would show a price for this for about a grand. Then you're not gonna actually charge that. This is to set. You're gonna set the ball. You're gonna set set the bar high. So when you deliver an irresistible offer, it's easier to close the deal. Okay. Videos. Gene has. My partner Jean is blessed with her husband Leon, who is a videographer, and the guy's awesome. We uh, had him put together a pretty cool green screen course for all of you to have. So Reginald, it's in the members area. It's a bonus that we gave everybody. It's very real. It's never been sold to anybody. It's it's done by a guy who does video full time, and I think you'll get a lot of value. Um, oh no, did I grab the wrong? I did. All right, here we go. Videos. Um, Here's a video example. I, I've been doing, let me, uh, hang on, let me stop it and grab this link. Um, over the last couple weeks, and I'm putting, this, I'm putting a link as a sample. Um, let's see. There's a link to a video. Gene, I just saw this. Thank you, Gene. Gene told me that choice savings from earlier and it looks like Kami said the same thing is print material company. Um, and all right, I'm gonna bring Gene on in a minute. So um, and Gene is having some political videos loaded as examples from Leon in the course. Here's a link to one. And and I'm not Gene or Leon, and I'm nowhere near as good as them. But uh, here's one I think from what my, my judge from 2012. It's got a thousand views. Um, we're going to use them more effectively going forward, but uh, you know, you live and you learn. So, no, my opponent has eleven friends. Reginald, one one, no zero zero in the end. Um, and I don't think eleven is that many. <laughs> I'm just being tongue in cheek. Um, so videos, they need them. They're easy to do. They don't understand the value. Simple branding on it and then we're going to reuse these videos in a lot of places on the website and we're going to use it when we do programmatic targeting duh because they are focused on efficient spending yeah paul that guy just turned 40. he's baby faced doesn't he yeah he's 40 or 41 i think um let's see Local regional candidates love to try and operate like the big guys, and I said some of this to you before, but I want to reiterate. Um, one thing that always blows them away, just like it blows dealerships away, like it blows any business away, is the concept of targeting, the big brother concept of retargeting and following and et cetera, right? This stuff works wonders in local politics. Key components, Facebook. Facebook is where you should be doing almost everything on the targeting standpoint. Why? Because at a local level, regional level, you're, you're able to reach the voters specific by zip code in a very cost-effective manner. And that's what it's all about. They have money, but they want to be very judicious in how they spend that money. When you retarget, now sure, you can follow them anywhere. You can go beyond Facebook. 
but Facebook is a primary destination and you want to make sure that you're on the right hand side of the page. I go for a grand a month, about five to six hundred is profit. Um, now political drops, somebody asked about it, let's talk about it. Every single candidate, and we're going to upload a, a chart we're putting together on legalities by state. It's always important to know that, but let's leave that discussion for now. Um, I think Arkansas is the state. If you're in Arkansas, you're out of luck on political drops. Every single candidate needs to reach a specific voter base. I do not need to reach people that live on the north side of Atlanta, right? I need to reach people and build awareness in my county. Now, if I was running for like a district position that wasn't countywide, that it was a local geographic base, then I would need an even smaller base. Many local candidates struggle balancing the budget constraints with how to reach the voters. This one is a good one. And when you look at it, it's, it's so important, guys. Direct to cell phone, robocalling, and surveying. For most of you, I'd stay away from surveying unless you're at the bigger levels and we can help you. But getting the message out, you're going to say the name six, eight, ten times in 30, 35 seconds. It's branding. Because all you want is when Susie goes into the ballot box to vote and she sees Brian Anderson or John Smith. She wants to know, wow, I keep seeing Brian Anderson everywhere. I don't know either of these guys, but that guy Brian's probably going to win because I'm seeing him everywhere and I'm hearing his name. I'm going to vote for Brian because I want to win. <laughs> that's sad, but that's kind of what happens in many, many cases. Let's see. Hang on a second. Let's... I had a question. Let me go back real fast. Now, I like to do, and I'm not fancy, and some of you are higher end at video than I am. Like Gene and Leon are at a more advanced level than I am. But I like to do five videos for a grand. Um, I think it was Walt that asked. Yeah, Walt was. Um, and then. I like to try to get a grand a month on programmatic targeting, Diane. Um, and you're only going to spend a little under half of that, on, and then you're going to keep the rest of it as your fee. So, oh, let me find wrong slide. Here we go. So, talking about bundling. So, when you want to maximize revenue, you got to identify the pain point of the client. It's like anything else, right? Most of them tend to follow this this model. Easy, ready? vague understanding of any of the technologies that we're talking about. And I mean vague. Remember, one of my opponents just got on Facebook the other day. Desire to maintain level playing field online with their competition or to best to beat to defeat their opponent, right? They really want to stay even digitally. They don't want to be left behind because it's an area that most people don't understand. They're interested in robocalling, but think it will cost them thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, and it may, depending on you know how they do it. But as we get into that module, I'm going to show you how to do it effectively for them and for you. Um, they need multiple services, right? This is uh, you know one of their pain points. They really do need more than one thing. They got a budget. They're continuing to raise funds or self fund, and a lot of the guys self fund. They come up short, they make a campaign alone. That's just what happens. And they're all under a deadline. Okay? No, I'm not even ranking the videos, Robert, at that price now. I'm just creating them. So, and you can add that in, obviously, as an option for sure. So, as a, a candidate that has money, right, let's look at it. 2500 for a website. Six months of targeting, retargeting at a grand, that's six thousand. Nine ninety seven for the social media strategy, fifteen hundred for branding. And you build it all out as an example bundle for ten thousand nine hundred and ninety-seven dollars. Right? But if you buy them all, it's sixty-nine ninety-seven. And that'll address your digital needs. 
Mr. Candidate, or two payments of thirty-seven fifty. Charge a little more if they're going to stretch you out, and make sure you get at least one payment up front before you start, or else don't start. Very important. We heard some horror stories on another call. Um, yeah, when I say political drops, I mean um, I mean an umbrella term that may involve landline or cell phone, uh, Mark and others. So what did we do? We basically discounted the value of branding. We discounted that website and we discounted the branding. We got rid of both of those. So they're getting those for free and you're making your money on the other stuff. So $69.97. Okay, here's, here's an example. Now, Johnny's running for office and Johnny is broke. Doesn't got a lot of money. $2,500 for the website. You're going to be consistent. Same kind of stuff. Now you got a $6,000 package. If they do it all, Johnny can do $29.95 and, uh, or two payments. Now he may, he or she may not have raised the money needed, but they will self-fund. They will loan the campaign the money and they will pay the money. They've committed. They've committed. Okay. All right. And political drops isn't really an option for this person. Um, the no money person. Now here, I didn't even have it built into this bundle because I have it as an upsell. Um, upsells. We all hate them, but they work. <laughs> and you can just create another package that has it in. I'll be happy to make one that, that shows, sure, I'll make one that shows it to you. So talking about multiple clients, and let's get, let's get down to the voice drop, political drop stuff. This is another name, you guys, just a branding. Um, okay, so we've got 16 or 17 people running just in my small county. I went, and that's just the Republicans. I don't even know how many Democrats are running. I'm not keeping up with it right now. Um, price it aggressively in some kind of, um, you can call it the political robocalling bundle or something, right? Price it so you make about three to $500 a drop. You want about five drops out of each candidate, right? And that's leading up the two, two to three weeks leading up to the end of the campaign. And this is completely done for you. I mean, our team will do it for you. There's no reason for you to do it. Paul, Nikki, and team, pretty good at it. They can bang it out. Um, so if you're getting 300 bucks a profit, let's go conservative, 300 bucks a profit, right? Times 10, it's 3,000 times five, five drops for each one. That's $15,000. 15,000, your net on this is very, very, very high. So, we'll explore all that later, but I want you to understand. Um, yeah, well, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Good question. Um, yeah, um, Jamie asked about you know what, let me, let me save those just a little bit longer, Jamie. Um, one more. Talking about the wholesale model or the kickback. <laughs> and this is uh, one we were chatting about. Uh, Gene and I were talking about the whole strategist. So you can build a relationship with a strategist. And one way to get them hooked into you is to grease the palms with money. Now, legally, of course, you're not going to know your legal kickbacks, is to pay them a fee. Just like I would pay a web design company a fee for bringing me business, right? Which I do in a couple of cases. You're either going to sell them a product bundle at a fixed low price so they can mark it up, or you're going to pay them a commission every time they bring you a deal. And I recommend about 20%, and I would pay them recurring. You want that person on your payroll as an indirect salesperson bringing you deals. Now, some, some of you may say, well, won't they do it for free? Maybe. But I'm not cheap like that. I tip the waiter 20 to 30 points. 
on a, you know if I'm at dinner and I want I want to make sure my service is good and I want this person to be loyal to me. I think you get it. It's important. So it's your call. There's no right answer or wrong answer per se. And I, I personally would do, um, I would prefer the commission deal so I can control the client. Whereas if you're, if you're selling it to them at wholesale, they're more controlling the client. So it's up to you. Um, yeah, so Josh agrees as well. Um, because remember, a lot of these guys have businesses and you want additional revenue and business from them from their local business. And, and we talked about that before. Extremely important. Let me go back to give me a second, guys. I'll leave it here. I'll leave it here. And what I'm going to do right now is stop, stop here, and take a break based on time, and let's let's do some Q and A. Um, and I think that would be the most useful thing. And let's see, guys. So we we answered a few of you. I know Diane Hill and. Reginald, we talked about um, access. So, Vanessa, if you're listening, check out Diane Hill and Reginald at the beginning of the call, very beginning. Um, Vita, I said I would check on the module four for you. Um, let's see. All right. Josh, okay, I'm just finding all the questions. Um, all right. Do the candidates need to have their websites done before the primary? I would say they want their websites as early as possible, Terry. They all don't. Some do, some don't. Some have horrible websites that need to be redone immediately. Okay. Let's see. Do I have a flyer that describes what is offered to the individual candidates? I don't, Jack, but we can talk through that for sure. Um, a lot of you were saying, how do I find data on the, the campaign? When we were doing the campaign financing searches, how do I find that in my state, right? Um, let's see. Hang on. I just made this up real fast. Alabama campaign finance disclosure. And I'll put an example in the group so you don't have to write anything down. Um, so, county elections. Let's see what we get. Um, wow, look at this, guys. This search facility will provide you with the mailing addresses and phone numbers for all elected officials in each of Alabama's 67 counties. Not bad. Um, let me just pick one real fast. Here's some in this county. Um, let's see if we find the right finance information. I bet I can find a website that'll tell us. Um, let's see what this is. Ah, look at this. Alabama Electronic Fair Campaign Practices Act reporting system. Contribution search. Hmm, let me see, committees, um, yeah, this looks like this would give you all this kind of data. Um, so I'll, I'll do some searches and come up with some examples. We'll see if I can, I'll see if I can find a, uh, I'll see if I can find a website that maybe will then link to all the different states. I know I'm sure it's out there. If there's not, there's a great lead gen website to create, right? Um, let's see, hang on a second. Um, yeah, like this one. Let's see what this is. So I'm looking at a district attorney named Brandon Falls. Let's view his financial summary. Um, 
Yeah, these guys have no money, you guys. Uh, he's got 137,000 raised. Just filed as the, as the other day. Spent 42,000. He's got 98,000 available. It's not hard, you guys. This isn't hard. Matthew, where do you live? Matthew Harrison said, how do we find who's running? Um, I haven't been able to find anything. Yeah, there we go. Thank you, Reed. Uh, share. Um, I just shared something. It was ballotpedia.org, and I've seen that one. Yeah, I hear Alabama may need a governor, Howard, no doubt, right? Um, okay. Um, So yeah, this gentleman running for DA has got a hundred and something thousand raised. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Because DA is what? Is it a state position or a county position? It's a county position. That's right. Very interesting. Okay. All right, let me go back to who else? Uh, Matthew just said Maryland. Okay. No, Matthew. Um, all right. Now, Matthew, I used to live in Maryland uh, when I was a kid. Uh, my dad was in the military. And I know there's a county, and I, I don't think this is where I lived, but it was called, I was little, um, it was called Prince George's County, I believe, right? Um, here's a candidate, here's a website. Candidate websites, these are the people running um, higher level offices. I would, I would go through I would go through the Republican or Democratic site in your county, and you'll find it. Um, if not, I would email this party, and I would ask them who, who the candidates up for election are. <laughs> and they're going to email you right back. It's that easy. Um, you found the elected officials, not the runners. Yeah, email, email Republican or Democratic Party, and email and say, hey, I'm an interested voter. I'm trying to find out who is running for office um, or if there's a website where the party is set up, you know, that lists them all. It's that easy. Okay. Cool. All right. Let me go to the – let me jump you guys. So um, I'm going to look for the questions again. Hang on one sec. All right. Yep, we need to make sure we get everybody in the Facebook group. Um, I'll work on that when this call ends. Um, voice drops to candidates. Yes, you can absolutely do that. Um, you could do something creative on that voice drop to get their attention and get them to call you back for sure. Um, let's see. Video marketing courses. Yeah, Reginald, I just don't think I'd pay for one right now. I'm more concerned with you creating the video than marketing it because I don't think you need to be selling, you know, the video optimization and ranking and stuff in limited durations. I see the video as a tool on their website and a tool in programmatic ads. Let's see. Dynamic survey Columbia is something when it's that decision tree based survey that somebody on the phone can press one or two and answer different questions and you can get voter data that way. You know, how do you feel about these issues? How do you feel about this and that? And all those kind of things. Um, let's see. I'm looking. Yeah, Kami said, at what point do you try to get the second payment so you don't get shafted if they lose? Well, that is a very good question. And I have never been shafted, but I kind of get your point, right? What if they lose and they owe you a second payment? I would ask for the second payment before that before that date. <laughs> um, and honestly, I've almost every time gotten one payment. The second payment 
the two payment options more expensive it's designed to get them to do the one payment just like the same thing you do in internet marketing right um, yes we will cover email marketing strategy Reginald for sure um, Jamie asked about school board position is it affiliated with the political party in general unfortunately in many states it is Jamie I don't personally think it should be but it is um, so what do we charge to make three hundred dollars profit so Walt just figure out what how many are they going to drop you know based on that person so if they have um, a thousand let's just say a thousand and if you charge in them ten cents right that's a hundred bucks um, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna play with the numbers so that the difference between your buy rate and what you charge generates three hundred dollars and in the variable is going to be how many are they going to drop and what are you going to charge them so I post in a group and we can talk about it in more detail I won't be able to do a good job out loud on the on the call like that it'd be easier to write it down um, Robert asked a good question when we're talking about local strategists are we referring to campaign managers not exactly Robert let us go into that in detail on another call I'm gonna have Gene do a detailed call on it um, what it really is is those kingpin those power brokers behind the scenes that say hey Brian why don't you run for this position Gene run for this and they create a slate of candidates that have similar beliefs and they help prop them up and they help market and, and run them if you will and now the candidate may have its own campaign manager but these are the, like the power brokers behind the scenes is, is a way I, I would talk about it Thaddeus asks can we sell to Republican or Democrat and nonpartisan I think so uh, Thaddeus I think you could get away with that for sure um, no if you don't have a primary right now if your primary is over or something then I would identify the winners and they are going to be very focused on beating their Republican or Democratic challenger in many cases Trey so identify the winners target them and identify the ones that um, that by budget that you want to go after um, yeah very cool Reginald said he's got a meeting tomorrow with a group related to his county's GOP they want to put me on the marketing subcommittee Reginald see look at that now you're on the marketing subcommittee for your county <laughs> pretty easy um, let's see yeah voice drops will do a complete done for you uh, read on the website side we did a bonus for most of you probably got um, if you didn't we can see what we can do to try to give you a really good deal but um, on the DFY on the website we will do the websites for you you get to pick from a couple if you want to go custom then we have to charge you but, but we'll still do it for you if you want um, let's see what's the difference in voice drop accounts for political members it's a white label of voice drops Paul I gave out some a one-time fee political use only voice drop so it's not designed to be used for other industries it's only for political and it's only a one-time fee now if you get serious with it you're going to need to go on the recurring because you're going to need to buy credits and all that kind of stuff but you got enough credits to get out the door and make some money with which was the whole idea um, if you're already a voice drops member then we'll just give you some extra credits uh, Paul got through um, let's see do you have to provide a list of phone numbers for a drop yes now let me give you guys a little secret do you have to provide a list of phone numbers for a drop now what if I'm going to pull my email up if you all don't mind real fast what if what if you could email or voice drop everybody in the county and let's say you live in a bigger county than I do what if you could voice drop everybody in the county or you could voice drop the people that have voted in the last three elections they voted a Democrat all three times you're a Democrat and you can target those exact people who thinks that might be interesting right Mark uh, put in a support ticket and we'll get it loaded for you today Mark Gamble asked about he's a member of getting extra for sure um,
Uh, let me, all right. You guys, um, I'm making sure that we're on the same page. So would you be, it, and I think there's a delay, would you be interested, if you were a candidate, in spending money to run voice drops to the whole county of, eight, of you know, phone numbers? Or would you be more interested in voice dropping robocalling, let's just, you know, we'll, we'll use a euphemism, right? The people that tend to vote every single election and they always vote Democrat. Who would you rather spend your money on if it was your hard-earned, donated money? The voters, right? Yeah. So, um, every political party, and we'll do, we'll do a training on it, but every political party makes access to the state database available to candidates. So uh, Scott is a friend of mine. He's running for Board of Education as well, a different seat than I am. And it, it, it's usually controlled at a state level, but all you have to do is ask the, the party people at a county level and they'll give you the contact. And so when Scott asked for this information, the guy at the state level said, hey, please fill out the attached form and I'll get you access to the voter database in your county right away. So I, I happen to have this as well, so does Scott. And guess what? Guess what? They got a PDF option, so if you're gonna walk around and go door to door or do direct mailers, they got what's called a CSV option. So you can voice drop directly to the voters that vote over and over and over again. So anyway, just wanted to share that. Yes, uh, Robert, log into the course. They are all in there for you. We're doing some live, some preloaded. We're doing a hybrid model, just changing it up a little bit, but not a stupid question at all, man. Um, so the list is, I can only speak about here in Georgia, it was completely free. And it, even if it's not free, you'd be an idiot as a candidate not to have it. I would think that it's always going to be free or very nominal charge mark. Yeah, I got phone numbers, Josh. <laughs> I guess it varies on what you get. Josh said he only got addresses. So um, I didn't get every phone number. I got some phone numbers, and I got some emails, and I got some. That it actually showed me social media accounts, by the way, too, but I didn't need that. Um, yeah, Terry, I'll check that when this call ends. That should be up. So, um, Okay. Well, I'm going to look through really fast before I wrap this up and make sure we answered every question. But in the call, we netted out three easy strategies to land clients. We netted out how to establish the budget they may be guiding themselves under based upon campaign disclosures. And we just talked through a litany of issues around selling clients. So let me see here. All right. Um, let me give you one more takeaway. Well, actually, I'll let it go in the Facebook group. We won't. Okay. All right. Well, enough said, you guys. Um, yeah, and like Brett just said, let's leave with that. You could use that voter database file to create custom Facebook audiences. Hmm, wonder if we're going to talk about that. Yes, <laughs> absolutely, Brett. Because you can have, when you start getting smart with the programmatic ads, right, you're going to have an ad aimed at families, an ad aimed at women, men, seniors, millennials, an ad aimed at super voters that vote every time, and they always vote the party line. And that's how you start to get smart with this stuff. It's not hard. It's common sense you know, with a little bit of a strategy and, and, and we've, we've connected everything together. But when you're the only person on the campaign to elect John Smith for office, you sure as hell need somebody like Brett Franks helping him understand custom Facebook audiences and how he's going to drive awareness, increase the number of votes you're going to get for a very small amount of money. Doesn't get any better. With that being said, you guys, thanks everybody for attending live. We appreciate your time. I will follow up on a couple things that I need to follow up on. We'll get this recording in the members area pretty quick. So we will talk to you soon. And uh, if you're not in a Facebook group, I look forward to getting as many of you guys uh, loaded in there today as we can.
Thank you very much. Bye-bye.